Okay, now if you notice the IPR down here on the bottom, it works in the 15 to 85% range. Usually key on engine off idling, it, that's normal. Well, about 24% is normal. 26 is okay, up to 30 is okay. Um, but we never wanted to see 85%. So this one's a no start when hot. Um, before I try to go and verify the no start when hot, I'm going to try to see what happens with my IPR if it goes too high on hard excel. So I'm going to take off here and watch. And it's already pegged at 85%. So we have a leak. Um, the truck's in 06. The pumps almost never go bad on an 06. So I suspect a leak. So I'm going to actually go ahead and check it out, air leak it, and see what we find on that. Okay, when you have these trucks and you have it, um, a couple things, a no start hot, a long crank hot, or maybe if you have the, uh, like this one we just witnessed with the injection pressure regulator going to 85%, we have a leak. I mean, it could be a pump, L3, O4, it usually is the pump, but if it's an O5 or up, it's almost always a leak. And now, a few things you want to do. One, quiz the customer. Ask them if anybody's worked on the injectors even as in the last 10, 20,000 miles. Personally, I have not found a good aftermarket injector that seals very well. I always use the Ford Genuine ones. I just have a whole lot better luck. I've tried some APs. I've bought, in, I've bought five this year. I've replaced three of them. And that's because the customers asked me to put them in. And I warned them. And I told them. But like I said, again, this is just me. Maybe I just haven't, obviously I haven't checked everybody's. I just have bad luck with aftermarket injector seals leaking on me. So I always quiz them um, if they've done that. I ask them if they've done the, uh, the fuel rail plugs, also known as dummy plugs, or the stand pipes, and especially the coupler on a 05 and up. Always look at my injection pressure, my ICP reading, because the only way we're able to check it and test it is key on engine off. And the same thing, you want to have it no more than atmospheric pressure. So it's going to read somewhere believe, between 0 and 15. Um, if you get it above that and suspect the sensor being bad, the ICP sensor, key on engine off, or about a quarter of a volt, because that's the only way we can check it to see, um, at least we can see then if it's starting off correct. And I have different videos showing that, so see what I'm talking about. I've got just a generic um, adapter here. It, it is a special adapter with the O-ring that seals it, and I have the air coupler plugged in it. So I screw that in there, just snug it up. And then I'll just put shop air in it and give it a minute or two because it's pushing all the oil back right now so you want to give it a few if you can hear it starting to leak normally if it's on this side you really hear it I mean it'll actually start smoking and steaming out this side and it's a lot louder I do hear it out this side, but not real bad. We've also pulled the air filter off. Even though this has a baffle and everything inside of it, it's not as pronounced if it's leaking, but sometimes we can hear it. Like at the beginning of the video, this one had a misfire on number six. So I'm going to have to go out to this side anyways to do the injector. And the way I remember it is the passenger is odd. That's my saying. So passenger side is 1357. The driver's side is 2468. So I'm going to remove this valve cover and check it. One last thing I want to go over. When you have the system pressurized. Okay, there, that actually started leaking, showing up pretty good. I'm not sure how well that's showing up. But this one, this side is actually showing the leak now. So I will be taking this side off too. I'm still going after that side because I have to fix the injector. But this side definitely has a leak. There, you see there's what I was talking about, the smoke, vapors if you can see it. And the sound of that's showing up. So we're going to be checking both sides and show you what's going on here. And, all, and what I was getting at, you want to, I mean we, we've got over 100 pounds of pressure inside of here. Even though it's leaking off, don't just unplug this. I've done that once and got oil back in my face. So whatever it takes, you can kink your hose, hear that it bled down and stop. 
and undo it safely. Just don't unplug it, especially if you had a sealed system. Because remember, they may not be a leak. You could have a bad IPR. You could have a weak pump, uh, even though that's very rare on the 05, but it still could happen. So um, don't just unplug it, and you may get hot oil back on you, uh, or just any oil back on you. The time I did it, I actually got it on the guy's car next to me, so um, don't tell anybody. But uh, anyhow, I just wanted to warn you about that. So let's go ahead and pull these valve covers off and see what we find. So now I have this one all opened up. I'm going to inject air again. Now the best friend that I have for this is some of these Stillman engineers. I'll take them, turn it on, and start to listen around the base of the injectors. Okay, now with this, with this engineers, it has a microphone inside here that shields it, so it pretty much only picks up what's in front of it. I'll take the microphone and stick it around the base of each injector. Now with this style, I would have pulled that cap off. Sometimes it has that six millimeter Allen, sometimes it actually has a hex head, but we're going to use the older, smaller one. So I pull off pull this off here. Now that's something I might want to mention too. Always inspect these O-rings. It's rare, but these O-rings do fail too if they weren't torqued down properly. And they they don't create a crank no start, um, but I have had them had a long crank in the morning. They start good all the other time, all during the day. So make sure you check these O-rings. And these are on both sides, so check those. Now on this side, I'll screw that in there. Snug it down. I, I know you can't check this with a video, but I, I don't hear anything out of here. Even though I did expect it, the, uh, I'm still hearing it mostly over here on number five injector. It's the only one I'm hearing. So, well, two things. Like the video that we took the very first where it started off, we do have a misfire on number six. So remember, two, four, six, eight. So this one needs an injector anyways. So it's not like I wasted my time we're going to sell the guy an injector so he can fix his misfire when cold. Okay, I covered some of this in previous videos, but I want to go over a few things just in case you haven't stumbled across those videos or maybe to also help this video. Um, when you have, the again, the 12 millimeter Allens are the new ones. The old ones are 10 millimeter Allens. A lot of guys don't have Allen wrenches that size up to 10 or 12 millimeter, and that's understandable. It's not expected for the average person. So, again, what I, what I suggest is if you got some uh, a bunch of different chisels here, you can go and get them and just get a 12 millimeter wrench until you find one that it fits on. So this right here is a 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter Allen. Now you have a couple choices. If it fits in there and clears everything, you just stick it in there and turn it with the wrench. Or if it does not, or if you want to make a tool, just go get your chop saw. Um, hacksaw is usually pretty hard on these things, they're hard in steel but a uh, cut off saw, a chop saw, cut you off a piece of it, enough that it sticks out of the socket, say to right there, and then you have a nice low profile 3 8 drive 12 millimeter Allen socket to get these out, or 10 depending on what you're using. Um, hopefully a 12 by the time you're going back together because that's what we need. So anyhow, now on this one, what I'm going to use, uh, I have a 12 millimeter, but it's a half inch drive, doesn't fit very well, so I'm gonna take my wrench on it, and I'll get this, I'll get the, uh, the dummy plug, out, the standpipe out of there. But I also want to show you what I'm doing here. Like how I said earlier about the, uh, using the short 30 in here. So I have the 30 millimeter, I mean the Torx 30 on there. I have it on there and I have my ratchet. This one actually started to strip. That's why I decided it will let me start filming because it, it can help you guys out when you, if you ever get a stripped one. So now with this low profile gear wrench ratchet, that low profile blue point Torx 30, I can do that and I can stick my pry bar in here and press against here and hold it straight, give me some leverage, 
and I took, just took a regular socket, stick it over the end of my ratchet, and pushing down on it so it doesn't round off, I can, see I'm able to grip it. You can hear there that it was going, but I was starting to round that off and it was getting pretty scary. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, let's stop, let's get this. So again, this is my setup right here. The gear wrench is low profile and the blue point 30 millimeter and that works nice doing that. So that now I don't have to worry about having that one all stripped out. Then I'll take the 12 millimeter with the 12 millimeter ratchet wrench, stick it in there, gives me clearance, pull out the stand pipe. And this is what I was talking about earlier. See how it hits here so we can't get it out. So I'll take it. That, pull this piece out separate and here and then sometimes it hits and this one was still hit this one's extremely tight against the side now we'll pry it up pull the fuel rail out now remember this is going to leak for a while so don't just unless you want the uh, oil all over the ground don't just pull it right out Okay, you can either push this in, you can push the retainer in and pull out on it. You can do that and you can fight it. But if I have the room, I just pull it out because I don't have to fight it. I'm holding on to it. Notice I'm holding on to it. These things aren't, they're, they're almost stainless. And so they aren't very ferrous and you, you, your magnet doesn't work very well with them. I'll pull it out and while I have it out, I put it back on. So that way, and make sure you put it in the groove, I put it back on. To me, that's the easiest. It's up to you. That's just, like I said, that's just the way I do it. So I'm going to take my socket. I'm going to push it over the plastic connectors. And then pull the wire out. And see how well this shows. But what I did was I took this and I compressed these two tabs. And then it was those latches no longer were stuck in the head and I was able to pull down on it and I did not break either one so we don't have these plastic pieces that's going to go down and eventually find themselves in the IPR valve so let's go ahead and remove this injector yeah there we go right there I'm not sure how well this shows up might have to get out in the direct sunlight but the seal is bad especially right there So here the mystery is solved. We've got a leaking seal and we'll fix that. Okay, now again, it's going to be preference and I admit I may be wrong. The, uh, they do service, Ford does not. Ford does not service these seals separately. There's a lot of guys online that do and they'll probably tell you that I'm full of crap, that they work great and maybe I am. Maybe I've just had extremely bad luck with them. But, um, I like to replace the old injector. I will be honest with the customer, give him his options, let him decide how he wants to do it and uh, wh which way he wants to replace it. But again, I'm going to suggest this injector because of leaking, because of no start when hot, and the other side because of missing. So he, he, I'm going to sell him two injectors, give him the option of all of them. And then of course, if he wants to reseal it, then um, that's his option. I just don't cover labor that way. The, uh, unless I, of course, if I did something wrong, but I don't do it twice for free. So it's up to you how you want to approach it. Um, and if you find any good seals that work or any injectors that work for sure, not that you put them in last week and they're still working now, but you've had them in for over a year, post it here on, the, uh, on YouTube so other guys can learn. And, um, you know, and that, that way I can learn too. Because if there's some cheaper ones out there, then that's going to work. I buy all mine from PSD Parts, as in PowerStrokeDieselParts.com. But... Um, you know, again, if there's, if there's manual um, aftermarket ones out there, just post it down here so we can all find it and learn from it. Thank you.